in a nutshell, you can basically read along here what it does. It'll edit, allow you to edit PDFs within your familiar Quark Express layout environment. So you can convert any PDF right in the Quark Express, Express with literally a click, as you'll see in a moment here. It can also help you to fix corrupt files. So if you have a recent file, a recent PDF file of, let's say, a Quark file that goes corrupt or another type of file, you can recover that PDF right back into Quark Express once again, in a familiar layout environment. Open PDFs where you lost a source Quark file, convert PDFs you found on the internet for internal use, and most excitingly as well for many people is extracting the images from the PDF files. Some people like it just for that reason alone, and we'll show you how that all works in a moment here. Some customer feedback. This was a, a, a great quote out of a, a longer quote, which I'll show you in a moment, from Derek Rosenplanter um, in Germany. And as you can read there, before PDF DTP, we used pit stop for the corrections. Now we can do it better. And, oops, here's his full quote. I won't read the whole thing, but in the, in the nutshell, what they're doing is using the PDF to DTP in a real life situation to uh, convert the PDF files that were created from Word and be able to edit and, and you know, make them pre-press ready within Quark. And that's why they're using PDF and DTP. And instead of using uh, PDF editors, they're finding it much better to use PDF and DTP in this case, which was a great uh, quote. And uh, there's more on this on our website. I'll get you linked to that later. Oops. Another great customer quote from our beta tester was, this PDF to DTP really will be a game changer for people who understand just what it can do for them. Now I'm not going to, you know, tell you everything Glenn said because you can watch the interview yourself on our YouTube channel, March for TV, and there there's a 14-minute, 21-second interview with Glenn Seville, a book designer, graphic designer, and he goes over many, many reasons why he really loved PDF to DTP and. What I like best about this interview is not the bad sound it has, because the sound could be better, but it'll be good enough to understand what he's saying. And basically what it comes down to is he used PDF to DTP on two real jobs uh, at the time it was in beta. And when I interviewed him, the product wasn't out yet, and he basically had two other jobs come in where he didn't have PDF to DTP. So we saw how useful the tool is to help you get PDF files back into your desktop publishing environment. Uh, compared to doing it the old-fashioned way, which depends on what you're doing, could be you know anything from hacking it in Acrobat and getting out content that way to uh, simply recreating the file from scratch. But both of those can be very painful, which you can hear in that interview. So that's basically the brief introduction. And now what I'm going to do is escape out here and actually show you how this works. So here I am in Quark 9.3 and up in top in the Quark menu item you'll see a menu item called Marksware. There you'll see our products including IDDQ for converting InDesign files with one click right into Quark Express 9. Very handy. And here's PDF DTP. Before I get into the preferences let's just show you how easy it in essence works. You just go here and Click Convert to PDF, and you navigate. You can do a find or navigate to the file you would like to convert. Let's start with this one first here. Now, imagine this PDF is all we have left. So we don't have any of the source material anymore. This is an old file from 2005. All I have is this file, but I, I need to get it in, and I, of course, place it in a handy position. I need to get in, I need to reuse this, this content. I want to, you know, update this to flight check 6.80. I want to get, you know, updated text in here. I want to use the logos, everything like that. So I want to reuse this content. I don't want to recreate this file from scratch. So how it works, we go to Marksware and we select convert PDF and we select a PDF and you simply click open. You see PDF to DTP doing its job here. Conversion times vary depending on the PDF, of course. 
PDF's internal structure is actually very chaotic. So what, what you're seeing here is quite remarkable in, in, in many ways, actually. We get a warning. Fonts are missing. Do you, you know, continue? And what you get here now is the converted PDF file in a fully editable, editable Quark Express layout. So I come in here and I can move things around. I can uh, edit text just like you know, just like you would with with any Quark Express layout. I see the blank page here, just like in the other PDF, in the source PDF. Now, once again, like I said, this is quite amazing getting a PDF file back into a desktop publishing environment like Quark here. There will be some touching up in most cases. We've gone to great lengths to, you know, let's say, uh, yes, yeah, smooth or or optimize this conversion, but there will be little things. And, you know, please do report those if you find them. Like, for instance, here's a little one. And, you know, we can fix this by modifying the image and setting it to item. And now you see it flows more like it should. <laughs> Interestingly enough, right on the fill of none, uh, you know, a comment here in the old flight check uh, um, sales guide and if we look back in the PDF you know that's how it should have been that page oops excuse me uh, where is it here so now you see how it is and with a little bit of adjustment it's more than less back to how it should be but for the rest, what you'll notice is a quite amazing conversion. So all elements come over, styles, colors, etc. Now let's pop over here again back into Quark. And let's just take a closer look at the preferences. Uh, these preferences have grown, you know, uh, incredibly in the, in the in the phase of development. This product's been in development for five years. We actually first showed it at some Quark, um, I guess it was roadshows or something like that, back up in, in Hamburg and in uh, Denmark and a couple other places. And it was already doing a pretty cool job back then, but in the five years, it's really come a long way. And now it's on the market. Uh, so these preferences, what basically I leave them all on, although I do turn off, by default, this will be on, so will this. And I've turned this one off because basically I don't want to substitute anything until I first get a chance to look at it. You can always go back in and turn that on. I've noticed this, this preference can, uh, you know, affect the conversion drastically. If you have missing fonts and you substitute, it can really, really create a, well, a mess, actually, in some cases. So by turning this off, you uh, alleviate a lot of problems, is what I found to this point. But you'll see all the other areas we, 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 you know, we cover in the conversion. So we have uh, image previews, all different areas of that. We'll even save out um, the OPI links. We'll convert everything, character styles, paragraph styles, tables, and even the pasteboard items. Once again, you can turn this all off if something is not working correctly. And that's what I recommend. If something ever is acting strange like tables, turn it off for a moment. See how it does when that preference is turned off. It does a great job with tables, actually. I'll show you that in a moment. And down here is where the path we're going to save the, uh, the job to. So we create a new job folder with all the job elements, the cork file and all the images we've extracted. And we'll overwrite existing folder if, if that's the case. So these can be quite powerful in in your uh, in your conversion, converting page ranges. Could also be useful if you have a huge file and you only want to convert certain pages out of it. That can be that can be very useful. I mean, the bigger the the chunkier the file, the longer it's generally going to take to convert. But also, I've noticed files that look small, seem smaller, but just have a lot of styles used and things like that can also take a long time to convert sometimes. So you might just want to use page range in some cases. So let's go in and show another uh, another example here. A 
is a 44-page document from 2002, and this is just a little example. This is an old uh, uh, GATF file, an old study. And you see once again the amazing conversion. Missing fonts, so you'll have some some text oddities. So if you have the fonts, it's a, it's even a lot better. But what I wanted to get to here was these tables, how it brings over these tables, you know, incredibly uh, accurately, and they can be very tricky. And this is a really neat part of the conversion of PDF to DTP. So you see how how incredible that uh, that is there. And this was a file, and it was interesting about this file is it's a real file that was from a corrupt. Uh, they had a corrupt file. They could no longer use the layout file. They sent us the PDF, and we also have a service for converting files and fixing bad files. And so all they hit, you know, the last hope was this PDF in their in their case, and we took the PDF and converted it for them. And you'll see they got back from they thought they had nothing left for their layout file, and now they have back more or less the file intact, with you know all styles, images, you know layout positioning, just just incredible. So really really nice. Uh, you know, uh, uh, conversion. You can see all the images listed here in that job folder I just showed you in the preferences. So it just extracts out all those images for you. Now this can be extremely useful when you literally all you have left is a PDF. You don't have, uh, I talked to some customers, you know, they get stuff from publishers. All they have is the PDF and well, figure it out, you know, re re recreate it, whatever you have to do. But with that PDF, you can now extract the, the, the images. And they're, of course, at, at the size you're used. But then you can, you know, much quickly recreate a file and, and get working with it than having to start from scratch and resource images and design elements. Uh, now, the last thing I wanted to show you here before I finish off the PowerPoint with a few slides is a little, uh, well, I, I was actually quite, you know, Quite ecstatic when I when I found this, and actually I, the engineer had informed me that it would probably be possible earlier, and it makes sense. And that is basically here we have an Adobe Illustrator file, and as many of you know, in Illustrator you can save when you save a file, a native Illustrator file, uh, it'll have a little check button preserve something PDF compatibility something something, and basically that's checked on by default. But if you have that checked on preserve PDF com compatibility or something to that effect. Uh, what you can do, and that means most of the modern Illustrator files, you can use PDF DTP to bring in Adobe Illustrator native file. Look at that. Now, what, what you know, uh, here we have fonts that have been, you know, what do you call it? Uh, you know, outlines created out of the fonts. Here we flatten these these uh, these fonts. But what was cool is up here. Wait a minute, is it really cool? What's going on here? Right, there we go. Okay. Maybe I'm just, you know, quick, clicking too fast on my computer. What was cool is this this text on a line and this little test file. I just, I just, you know, the local uh, soccer club here, and basically uh, I just added this text in. And what's neat is PDF DTP even converts that text on a line. I just found that so neat. So now I have this file right up here in in um, Quark Express, so I can get to work and do whatever I need to do with this Illustrator file now. Right you know, here within Work Express. So another little use for PDF to DTP. And I'm sure you all out there will find many other uses as well. So please let us know how you're using the program, the extension, or how you think you could see it being used. 
Now if I pop back in here, Just a couple resources, uh, marshware.com, actually it's been down right now, but normally should be up, I think it's back up now. There you'll find tons of testimonials, documentation, resources. Uh, marshware TV, you mentioned that earlier, a lot of resources on there to be found. Twitter, follow us on Twitter if you're on the, in the Twitter sphere. And of course, we're on Facebook and LinkedIn and all those other, uh, all those other areas. For actual technical support, please do fill in the technical support form, which you can find on our webpage. Very important that way we get a full background understanding of your system, the exact versions of the software. I mean, a lot of things we, we a lot of typical things to do for any support. Make sure you have the latest version of the software, Work Express 9.3 latest update, latest version of your OS. You know, all these sort of things are really uh, important to make sure that you're up to date because that can really help uh, minimize support issues. But please, for technical support, fill out the form and you know, we'll get right back to you.